the horn in my beetle isn't working very well. So let's see if we can fix it. Yeah, so I tried blasting some Wally Brain out of it who pulled out in front of me and uh, they just laughed at me, so uh, we can't be having that. So basically, uh, yeah, the horn is just kind of squawking, which is less than ideal. Now this is one of those jobs that I thought was going to be a straightforward affair and it has proven not to be. I actually took the steering wheel off, cleaned the horn ring and checked the connections onto the button and all that as well. I have taken the horn off, I've cleaned the connections on that and I checked the connection point under the bonnet. So it's still not working properly, I actually even tried a different horn, same situation, it's just kind of mute, it, uh, it doesn't, uh, it kind of buzzes rather than beeps. So that's uh, not very effective really is it? So what I need to do is I need to do a little bit of jerry-rigging to see if it's the permanent live supply to the horn that's the problem or if it's the switched ground that's the problem. So that's basically the way this works. When you press, the, there's always a live going to the horn and when you press the button on the steering wheel, it basically grounds the horn into the steering column and that makes your circuit and then the horn beeps. So it's uh, pretty straightforward in that, uh, in that uh, kind of way, but yeah, what we need to do is we need to actually take the ground off the horn and short it out underneath the, the wheel arch. And if it works properly then, then we know it's a ground supply. If it doesn't work and it does work when we connect a permanent live supply directly to it, off a jumper pack or something like that, then we know it's our live supply. The horn is in here in the passenger wheel well. Uh, that's, it, uh, that's it there. As I said, I've had it out of the car. I've cleaned it all up and everything like that. The brown wire that comes from it is actually our ground supply. So that's the one we're going to disconnect first. And I'll ground it off one of those bolts up there that is holding the, uh, holding the bumper in place. And if it works correctly, then we kind of know that that's, uh, that that's where we need to be looking further. All right, so there's our, there's our brown wire off there now. And you'll see I made up a little test wire here, which is just basically a spade terminal with a, a wire with a stripped wire on the other end. If we can get it on now, we'll be laughing. There we go. Now we'll turn on the supply in the car and uh, turn on the ignition basically and see if that works when we short it out. Okay, so we have permanent live supply. So now let's see. Okay, so it does work when you short out the... All right. So that's what our problem is. We have a ground connection issue rather than the live. So the live is working fine. So let's just put that back on again now. Spade towels are not the tightest in the world. I might just see if I can give them a little squeeze as well. Yeah, see that shouldn't be falling off like that. I'll come back and have a look at that now in a second. All right, so just gonna give these little squeeze of the pliers. Now the thing is that the horn isn't, it isn't polarity sensitive. So you can kind of put, a, put the connections on either way around. I can tell you now, Regardless of which way you put the wires on, it still doesn't work. The most likely culprit in this situation is actually the slip ring on the back of the steering wheel or the uh, tab that runs along against it. So if you find that your horn is beeping intermittently for no apparent reason, it's because it's shortened out somewhere and possibly because of that. So what you need to do is take your steering wheel off and clean up everything behind there. Make sure that the tab is the way it's supposed to be and that the tab is not grounding out uh, prematurely or whatever. So yeah, next thing to do is to trace the wiring back and see where the problem lies. Now just having a look, if you trace the wiring back from the horn, you can see there's a whole load of tester tape wrapped around there and obviously the insulation is damaged somewhere along the line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip off that tester tape first of all and see if there's a problem in there and repair anything that's, that is a problem. And then we'll test it again and see if that actually fixed the problem. What I'm gonna do first of all though, is I'm gonna make it a little bit easier for myself and I'm gonna, poke these wires back through the hole up here so that I can actually do it under the bonnet instead of having to do it in the wheel arch. I have the tape stripped back here and you can see there isn't really any damage to the wiring underneath it so I'd say it's probably all right there but we'll leave it stripped for the moment and we can come back to that if needs be. This wiring joins the harness for the headlights and indicators and everything and goes up along here and goes down into the inside of the car so we need to start tracing back there now. In reality what you're looking for is any points where it passes through bodywork any damage to insulation or to the sleeve that it passes through and any connection points or anything like that along the way because they're the points where you're going to have uh, have short circuits or uh, loose connections or anything like that and they're the first pl places to address. 
Now, there are quite a few brown wires in underneath the dashboard here. So what we're going to do is just going to have a quick look at a wiring diagram, make sure that the wire stays brown until it gets up to the, uh, the steering column. But where you're looking to, where it actually goes is up to this point up here. If you can look in behind, between the steering column and the cowling, there is a little tab in there. And that tab is what it actually, what the wire actually goes to. So what you could do is you could actually try grounding off that tab and seeing if you have any luck. But what I think is, I think it's actually that wire there. And I'm going to double check. And if it is, I'm going to pull this connection off. I'm going to just try and ground this and see if the horn functions properly. And if it does, then it means the problem is between here and the steering column or the steering wheel. The Samba.com has a lot of wiring diagrams for various different Volkswagens, which is actually very helpful. And this is one I've downloaded on my phone and I've just focused in on the section here between the horns. So you have your, your black with yellow stripe wire going down to the horn, which we know is all right. And then the brown wire coming from here down to the horn button itself. So that brown wire does go all the way to the horn button and then it grounds. So it goes down to the, the yellow part down the bottom, which is your ground. So now we're going to go and see if there is actually a, a connection point somewhere along the somewhere along the way there too. So we need to find where T8 is at some point too, if this doesn't work. But I am wondering if T8 is actually just a connector on the bottom of the steering column. So we will, uh, I'll find out and I'll come back to you. So T8 has turn signals and ignition switch and everything like that on it as well. So it obviously is that connector that's on the bottom of the steering column. So let's pop that connector off and we will take that brown wire and short it out and see if the horn actually operates. I have the wire haphazardly stuffed into the connector there. So you could put a, ter a spade terminal on the end of it there if you were that way inclined. But the other end of it now, with the ignition is on. So this, when we ground it off the door post here, the light switch for the door post, if the horn operates correctly, then we know that the problem is between the steering column and the steering wheel. So let's see. <laughs> it does nothing. <laughs> All right, I think we're barking up the wrong tree on that one then. So, All right, so I just realized that if that's the connection for the ignition switch as well, and I've just pulled that off, I probably killed the power to the horn as well. So that's why that's not working. So what we need to do is we need to just uh, attack this slightly differently. So leave the connector in and then just go in from this side and then ground it out and see what happens. Okay, so I've taken the steering cowl off and you can see there that the, the brown wire that's on the connector here is actually going onto a yellow with a black stripe wire and the actual brown wire that's going up to the horn push is this one here. So there's obviously something arseways there already. So I'm wondering what it is. Uh, what is that yellow with black stripe one, uh, one? It must be something to do with the headlight switch. I will have a look at that now in a second. Um, that might be what our problem is, actually, though. It's just that the wires are, are uh, uh, the wrong way around. Um, in any case, even when you short out the connector here, I have, a, I have the wire stuck into the connector there on the correct one for what the horn should, or what the horn actually is at the moment, and still, mm. still not working. So it's not, the problem is not between here and here. The problem is elsewhere, so we have to trace our wiring back a bit further. What we need to do now at this moment in time is find where this brown with blue stripe wire is actually going because that is our culprit. Because there's obviously another connection point there that that's going to. And I would imagine when we find that, we find a problem. So I need to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of searching underneath the dashboard. In a Beetle, it's only two screws holding the fuse panel up and you will get yourself much better access to everything in it if you actually just take those screws out and let it hang down. Now you'll see that there are two multi-plugs up here and one of the multi-plugs has our brown with blue uh, blue trace wire going into it and that's our uh, that's the one we're looking for so we're going to disconnect that well actually i'm not even going to disconnect it yet i'm going to stick my test wire in there and we're going to ground that out and see if we get the horn working properly and if it does then we know our problem is there if not we need to go further back god i hope the problem is there interestingly there's a broken wire in this connector as well and also the, t the connector is very corroded in there so i'm wondering is that actually a problem so let's uh let's just clean that up and then we'll stick our spade terminal on that and we'll ground it out again and see what happens okay i'm going to take the connector uh, or the pin out of the connector there we go okay so now give that a good clean And I'd say it's fairly, it's fair to say that this is the same wire that's going all the way down to the horn from this point. 
So if it works now, then we we kind of know what our problem is. It's probably just corrosion on the contact. And that's a common problem with classic cars. Hey, that's working. Beep. Right, okay, so that's uh, that's progress. So now we can insert our pin back in the connector and just bend the tab back up again so it stays in. And before I put it on, I want to find out what that other yellow wire is doing, if anything. I'm sure Volkswagen didn't just stick it in there for no reason. I mean, it should be doing something, but... So it's got a yellow wire going on to... Yeah, let's, uh, let's just do have a look at the wiring diagram. So I have this uh, file that I modified to just make it uh, so that it will actually fit into a spade terminal. I've kind of reduced the width of it and the thickness of it. So you can actually clean out spade terminals with this and uh, it's usually quite pretty useful. So I've done that connector up there and I've done the one here as well. I actually cleaned it out as best I could, sprayed it all with contact cleaner and still, it's still not working perfectly. So where else do we need to look? Now herein lies another lesson in electrical fault diagnosis. There can be more than one problem. So we also need to consider the fact that the power going to the horn isn't, uh, isn't strong enough either. But what we can do is in order to kind of troubleshoot that, we're given the fact that we're getting a, a bit of power to it. When the battery is, uh, when you're only supplying from the battery, you're only going to be getting about 12 and a half volts. You start the engine, the alternator will be giving you about 14 volts. So why don't we start the engine and see if the horn works then? Oh, hang on. Okay, so we got about 13 and a half volts on the gauge there, so let's see. It is better. It actually is better, believe it or not. So now what I have is, I have a multimeter on the ohm reading, so we're going to take a resistance measurement of the ground wiring for the horn. Now, Owen, will you press the, uh, press the horn button there, please? Keep pressing it. Just hold it. Okay. <laughs> oh God. Now, are you all right there, Mister? Just no. Don't don't keep pressing it like that. Just hold it like that. Now, just see that. Yeah. Just press it in. Hold it for me, okay? You can you use the use your hand like that. Okay, now press it. Go on. There you go. Hold it like that for me. Okay, go on, just for a second. <laughs> well, either way, we're not getting a very good reason, reading of uh, resistance there. So, press and hold it on. Okay, as hard as you can, just for a second. Okay. Go on. Hardly the definitive reading I was looking for, but anyway, we can we can tell that there's definitely high resistance on the ground path there, and we need to reduce that resistance somehow. So I've gone through the wiring on the steering column, I've gone through the wiring on the in behind the fuse panel, so there has to be an issue somewhere else. I have one probe of the multimeter connected to the connector block here where the brown wire comes in, the other one connected to the brown wire inside the wheel arch, and I'm getting 0.1 ohm, so that is absolutely bang on. Okay, so now I'm taking the measurement from the connector block here to the connector block on the steering column and we're getting 0.2 ohms. Okay, so that's absolutely fine as well. So that is not a problem either. So now what I want to do is I'm going to leave the connector in there in the, uh, in the connector for the steering column and we're going to get a measurement between the body of the car and the steering column here and we're going to see if that's our problem because I'm thinking that the, the steering column itself is not adequately grounded. Okay so now I have the wire going from a good ground point there to the connector on the back of the steering column and we're going to press the horn button and 20, an inconsistent 23 ohms is the lowest I got there okay so that is crap now we're getting a, kind of 100 ohms that's 
So there's the source of our uh, there's the source of our problem, right? So we need to find out why the steering column is not grounded properly. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually check the grounding of the steering column itself. All right. So now I have the horn button taken off. Okay. So what we're going to do is with the with the multimeter connected to the ground and to the connector on the steering column, we're going to touch that off there. And normally that would make the horn beep. We still have a 16, 17 ohm inconsistent rubbish ground there okay so that is definitely not good enough so let's just i'm going to just pop that wire inside the steering column okay for the moment nothing is ever straightforward even when i was putting the heat exchangers in that was a big faff and it didn't need to be so anyway look i'll get it fixed but it's uh, just one of those things irish weather strikes again <laughs> lovely sunny day only a few minutes ago and now hailstones Ah oh, yeah, why should I be surprised? I have two possible avenues of approach at this point. I can either go and try and get a good ground in the steering column only for the problem to reoccur further down the line and for it to require a serious amount of effort, more than I'm willing to put in. Or I can put a relay on the ground circuit of the horn. So the relay seems to make much more sense at this point in time. We do have a ground there, it's just not a very good ground. And the thing about it is, is that corrosion and stuff will set in in the future again and then we'll end up back to square one and also i cannot find any information about how the steering column is supposed to be grounded in the 1303 everybody talks about the you know, the rubber coupling on the steering column on a standard beetle and all that 1303s don't have that they also don't have the wire that goes down the center of the steering column so that's another thing that's different so how it's actually done i do not know and i can't find anybody who can give me a straight answer and i can't find anything in manuals or drawings or anything like that so anyway look this is a fix it's not a bodge really i mean in actual fact the thing should have had a relay from the factory so to me it's just remedying a situation that should never have occurred in the first place anyway i have a relay so i'll show you what i'm doing so here's the relay and it is a second-hand one, which I was using before for something else, but it doesn't matter. It'll work. And if it doesn't work, I'll just change it out, but I'll still have all the wiring in place. And I have this uh, this ground wire here with the ring terminal soldered onto the ends there. And that is going onto one side of the switch part of the relay. And the other side will be connected to the horn. And then there's... Uh, so, so the horn is going to get a decent ground. And then the original ground for, for the... The original ground for, for the, uh, in the that's in the car will go to one side of the coil and the positive for the horn will go to the other side of the coil and to the horn. So we need to make a jumper wire that goes from there and down to the horn as well. And that will get a permanent 12 volt supply. Grounded on the, the coil will be grounded when I press the button and that will close the switch which will bring a ground from the horn down to this wire and it will be bolted in on a good ground underneath the bonnet. Back under the bonnet, you will see that I have pulled the horn wiring back into this area and I have a new wire here, which, yes, it's a two-core household mains cable, but it's absolutely fine for this job and the benefit is it's double insulated. So it's actually ideal for down in here. Now, I will uh, I'll get something to cover over those connectors after the fact, but for the moment anyway, it's just uh, let's just get everything set up. Okay, so here's the relay. So let me explain to you what's going on here. So the black with yellow trace is our permanent live supply going to the coil on the relay and then going directly down to the horn through the uh, through the same spade terminal. So it's going through the coil and then the ground, which is operated by the push button on the steering wheel, is connected to the other side of the coil, which will complete the circuit and close the coil. When the coil closes, you have the ground from the horn coming up to the switch and then you have a ring terminal on the other side of that switch, which is going to go on to this M8 bolt passing through the inner wing here. And I'm gonna take the nut off and I'm gonna do that. Now, before I connect that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna test the relay and make sure that that's actually operating. So uh, what I'll do is I'll press the horn and you should hear that click, but obviously the horn's not gonna beep because the ground path isn't completed yet. All right, so there we go. Last thing to do now is to take off that uh, nylock nut and stick the ring terminal on there. Tie this, uh, cable tie this all up and stick a grommet on the point where it passes through the wing, which should have a grommet anyway, and then test out the horn and see if it works. And now it's just time to test it, and then we tidy everything up. So let's see if it works. <coughs> yes, folks, it works. Happy days. And that, folks, is the job done. <coughs>